With us now is no stranger to the international airwaves because we have with us Dr. Patricia Broderick. Hello, how are you? Hi, Donna. <laughs> nice to have you here. So you've been <laughs> on all the big talk shows in the world. You have your own uh, radio show on the BBM Global Network. You are a physician. You are a neuroscientist. You have all this information. We're gonna, I'm so excited to be talking to you. I don't even really know where to start, but I suppose we should start with the fact that you are a physician. Uh, you're an educator, a medical mm -hmm. educator now. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that role that you're playing. That role. I'm a medical professor at the City University of New York School of Medicine, at the City University of New York, at the Great City College of New York, the flagship college of the City University of New York, where we have many Nobel Prize winners who went there. John O'Neill just won the Nobel Prize two years ago. Professor Ziegler is very proud he was in his class. Professor Ziegler says that I should get the next one because that John O'Neill was the first Irish male and I should be the first Irish female. I agree. That's what Professor Ziegler says. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, and um, don't forget Jonas Salk graduated from there and Colin Powell graduated from there and don't forget my cousin Patrick Broderick graduated from there. Okay? Comes with a lot of uh, comes, history and tradition. Yeah, yeah. Growing up, what did yes. you originally want to be? An actress. And you were on the stage at the age of three. Mm hmm <laughs> Loved every minute of it, and I still do. And you still Irish step dance. I still Irish step dance, yes. You also shared with me in the green room, though, that um, you had had a, an accident, and you said that yes. almost all your bones were broken. Oh, yeah, just about everything, yeah. So they put you back together. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> did. Yeah, I was smashed, actually. Uh, Don and I, Don is a very dear friend of mine, and uh, he was one of my publishers. He's my favorite publisher, but I love them all. I tell them all the same thing. But the truth is, he's closer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were traveling together, and we were coming out of the Heinz Convention Center, and I, uh, somehow Don and I always held hands. Uh, and for he, one second, he stopped holding my hand to wave Merry Christmas to everybody. And I asked him to please stop doing that. My father was killed on Christmas Eve when I was six and a half, almost seven. And stop telling Merry Christmas to everybody because you're driving me crazy. You're getting me on, you're getting on my nerves, okay? You, do you have to talk to everybody we meet? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, to this day, he blames himself for this accident because I went ahead uh, and my talk was the next day, mm -hmm. and we just snuck out of one of the talks because it was boring, and we were hysterical laughing. And there was a curb that we didn't know was there because we came out a different entrance that we went in. And there was a curb. It was a, it was like seven or eight inches, and it was pitch, pitch black, dark night, December fourth, two thousand nineteen. No lights in the convention center. Uh, no warning sign, no yellow sign, and I wanted to move, you know, mm -hmm. so. Get the show on the road. he was getting on my nerves because he was <laughs> wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and I wanted to go out to eat and have a glass of wine Bah humbug. Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started off and I'm small. And I walked, he, he almost had a heart attack. I walked six feet in the air. He said I walked at least six feet or more. And the night before, I had a dream that we were in an accident. I had that dream. Do you believe in divine intervention? Do you feel that's why you're here in your earthly body now? Yeah, I do. Why I'm right here with you, mm -hmm. right? And Eddie Dunn, <laughs> uh, and, and Will, and, my, and everybody. No, I hate to leave anybody out. That's okay. I don't know what to do about the dedication of this book. Oh, uh, okay. You know, the dedication Your new book? is... Yeah, that's yeah. the new book, yeah. And it's called Neuro... Uh, Neuroimaging, Sensing Biochemistry in the Brain. Okay. Sensing Bio... And it's a monologue, and it's very unusual for a scientist. Uh, doctors and scientists don't write a whole book, a monologue, 
17 chapters right from their head. You just don't do that. Um, I did it. And you believe that this book was kind of gifted to you through this experience? Well, yes, you're, you're going into a, a bit of neurotheology there. That's very interesting. Well, well, I don't actually have a degree in that, and I know that you do. <laughs> but um, I do consider myself pretty intuitive because I get to talk to yes. a lot of people and have these deep conversations with yes. people about yes. thought. Yes. And uh, you're an inventor. So you have yeah. this new book, and you also have um, this probe. Is that what right. you call it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the Broderick, I have several the other. Yeah. Probe. The Broderick Probe, named after my father, Patty Broderick. Uh, what a man. Yeah. So what I does just, your probe do? Because uh, uh, okay. what I think it does is that um, you're able to have some sort of energy in this probe and that yeah. it is placed... Is it next to someone's skin, or does it go? Is it subcutaneous? Does it go in the skin a little bit, or it's smaller? It than, it's smaller than a human hair. Okay. It's for animals and it's for humans. Uh, two trademarks: a trademark for animals, a trademark for humans. Do you want to know why I started this? Of course. Yeah, because I could be sitting in Westchester somewhere, you know, relaxing, you know, and what am I doing? I'm working 23 or 24 hours a day. I'm working 19 hours a day. I'm working 18 hours a day. I'm working 22 hours a day. Writing a book from scratch, all 17 chapters, typing it and everything, okay? Because I have to get this message across of the journey that I took from neuroscience into sensing the brain. Okay. Looking inside the brain. Doing things that never happened before because when I started out for my doctorate, I saw that animals had to be killed. Now, I'm a very passionate person. I don't want that. So, what I did was, I wanted to see if, if nice people could be nasty and nasty people could be nice. Uh, I'm rather sensitive and I don't know why some people are nasty, for nothing, like for nothing. You know, sometimes we say not for nothing. Why are people nasty, you know, for nothing? Why? What would hurt them to say hello and smile? I wondered. Uh, and so I started out to see actually what makes people happy and what makes people nasty in terms of signaling in the brain. In the brain. In terms of neurotransmitter signaling in the brain. Okay, so I had to sacrifice animals in order to do my PhD, to accomplish my PhD. So I did it, but the whole time I heard these animals crying. They cry. And you were uncomfortable about that, so you um, was, invented a better way. Yeah, <laughs> I said, I can't take any more of this. I can't take it. Because they knew, yes. each one knew that that was happening. Even the, I had a, a genetic model called Long Evans, after, named after Dr. Long and Dr. Evans. And that was a genetic model of nastiness. They were nasty, boy, they almost took my hand off one night at one o'clock in the morning but I still like them. But they're nasty, but they knew that one of their siblings was in trouble. Mm -hmm. They started to cry. So you've been studying and this behavior in yeah, animals and yeah. in humans yes. with the intention of wondering if the chemistry could be changed so that yes. people could go from nasty to nice. Exactly. Go from the naughty list. <laughs> 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 to the nice we list. have to keep a little naughty, <laughs> otherwise it's very boring. Okay, we'll keep a little <laughs> naughty, Dr. Broderick. So this probe, what does it do? Like, how, what okay. did you discover? Well, you put a little potential in there, which is energy. Okay. Applied potential is applied energy. And then the molecules start, do you want to see it? Yes, I would love to see oh, it. Oh, okay. Okay, and I know that we'll add in a picture later that's... Um, yes, here. Okay. Yeah, now we're not going to take it out. This... <laughs> Only because okay. um, I wanted to show you one that was gamma irradiated. Are you scared? A little bit. Should I be? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I trust you completely. Brilliant oh, scientist here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is to ask you to 
just hold it like this and okay. not hold it from the top. Understood. Yeah. Okay. All Holds right, it like by this. the base. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm holding it by the base now. Yeah. Now this is smaller than a human hair. Oh, it's wow. smaller than one human hair. I do see a little something in there, doctor. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. Now, do you see uh, like a wire? I do. Okay. So there's a wire, but that's going to conduct the signal. Okay. Now, the probe is made of carbon. Okay. And you know what we're made of? Carbon. Carbon. And you know that carbon never dies. Do you know that? Correct. It changes well, form, think about, right? Think about death, though. Okay. Think about death. We're made of carbon, and this is carbon. And I decided I wanted to use carbon. I knew I had to do something different. I had to take the world by storm, and I was going to do it. But each day that I'm doing this, I don't feel any different from anybody else, or I don't feel that I'm special. I don't feel any of it. I just know that I have to get it done. I must get this done. So as we have to put some energy into that carbon and some unsaturated fats, some saturated fats, some, some complex lipids. After all, the brain is 80% fat. Okay? So you can call me a fathead. <laughs> it's 80% fat. <laughs> and it's 20% protein. And then people are tell, oh, you can't eat that. That has fat on it. Give me the fat. Give the steak me. with the fat. <laughs> The lamb chop with yes, the fat, yeah. I go right for the fat. It's very good for you. Okay. Oh, my God. I hope <laughs> I don't get letters on that. No, you might, but it's okay. Oh, yeah, because I, that's what I'm all about. I'm you, all about shaking the world up. Yes. I want to shake the world up. Because do you, you believe yes. um, that through using the probe and energy that certain things like epilepsy or other things, yes. diabetes, yes. what are some of the things that you oh. feel like this can work with? Whoa. The probing. Pub probing. Uh, yeah. Okay published, already published, in articles on diabetes, okay. epilepsy, Parkinson's, stroke, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's patients, you know. Parkinson's patients now go into Alzheimer's. And Parkinson's is contracted now at the age of 21. And it's called young onset. Okay. Okay, this is mind-boggling, and the same drugs that are used for Parkinson's are being used for Alzheimer's now. We do not have a treatment for Alzheimer's. I'm looking inside the brain, and I'm finding it. I'm going to find it, Donna. You are going to find yeah. it. Yeah. You really, truly are. Yeah. I was excited to talk to you on the phone, and I know that my, <laughs> my television show is only a half hour long, and so I yeah. really could do a whole like three-hour like one-on-one -on -one session with you. <laughs> I do believe. I could do that with you also. I enjoy you so much. I do believe that you will win. Um, really? The, of course. Why not you? I'm nominating you. I'm saying absolutely. Oh, yes. um, but this is going to change the world. Good. So it thank is. you for your dedication. Like you said, you just, you won't stop until. I will not stop. You're, you complete the puzzle. You're right. Many puzzles. Yes. All through the broader probe. Yes. I believe. I'm yeah. so glad that you joined us. How can people so find glad. out more information about you? Is it through your well, website? How we do you have like websites to be engaged mm -hmm. with? We have Easy Sense, okay. E A Z Y. That's I put a Z in it. Sense sensing the brain, and I put the easy there because everybody calls them smart. Some smart. They call themselves smart. They're probes. They say smart stint and all of that. I thought, who who needs that? I called it easy. That's the company that we're marketing the probe through. And we have contracts in progress from Japan, India, and Spain. And we're successful already in NYU uh, Medical Center in the epilepsy patient. So uh, we, have, we have the evidence for all of the neurodegenerative diseases, epilepsy, stroke, Parkinson's, we need more on Alzheimer's, but I have a lot of ideas and a lot of things going on. All of the psychiatric disorders, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar. Um, bipolar, remember, has psychosis in it. Cocaine induces psychosis. There, 
as Don says, there is not a body of work anywhere in the world that can match this. Where I have sensed the brain and seen inside the brain on every single neurodegenerative disease and psychiatric disease and every single uh, take Alprazolam, for example, Xanax, on every single drug. Um, myself and Dr. Arvid Carlson and Dr. Monty Pierce in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Dr. Arvid Carlson is Nobel Prize winner in the year 2000. He has just died uh, just recently. Don and I were going to see him and he just died. But we have put Al Alprazolam on the market and we have put Abilify on the market. I work with Dr. Peter Riedera, who should get the Nobel Prize in Parkinson's, and he just accepted my paper and had me do a whole special issue. Um, so here I am with Donna, <laughs> with Arvid Carlson, <laughs> with Monty Piercy. Um, I don't know. I'm just so darn happy. That's all I I'm can so say. darn happy, too. And I'm <laughs> honored that you came to the set today and to talk to me about this and to bring awareness about the work that you're doing, because I know that you're inspiring others to follow in your footsteps, to embrace science, to seek the unknown, to find the solutions. And even talking to you, you know, you usually listen, a person listens with their ears, but when I'm talking to you, I'm listening with my eyes and I actually feel my brain engaged. I feel it. It's so cool. Good. That's your <laughs> prefrontal cortex. It's working. And that's <laughs> where the images come into your brain. Here's where I see To things. give your brain reward. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we're rewarding each other's brains. That's <laughs> what we're doing. You know, the other day I had on um, John, um, who invented the cone heads from Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. I definitely need him to talk to you because I've got the big brain. I think we need more space. We need cone heads today. Thank you, Dr. Broderick. I would Broderick. like to talk with him. Yeah, I would love to introduce you. I'll make thank that you, introduction. Thank you, Donald You're welcome. Drake. Wow. Thank you. And that's our show. We thank you for joining us. Um, please, you know, if you're a person that wants to make a difference in the world and you feel like you have an idea, just go for it. Don't stop. You know, be present. Be focused. Deliver it.